Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here with lesson number eight, learning to use the Raspberry Pi and we are learning Linux on the Raspberry Pi. If you've been with us with our uh, through our first seven lessons, first lesson I sort of gave you an overview of the equipment that you would need, the gear you would need to follow along these lessons with me. In lesson number two we got the operating system installed and got the Raspberry Pi booted up and then lesson number three through lesson number seven was focusing on learning how to operate Linux and learning how to control the Raspberry Pi via the Linux command line or the terminal window. Okay, we've learned things of how to create files, how to edit files, how to move files, how to delete files, <coughs> create folders, finding our way around the system. Okay, today what we're going to learn is we're going to learn sort of a neat little capability that you can do and that is is that so far if we've done things like ls to list the directory or catalog to look at something we've always just had it show up here in the terminal window. I'm going to show you how you can take the output of those commands that we're doing and you can send the output rather than to the terminal window you can send it to a file. So in order <coughs> to do this we're going to need to create some files. So let's look here. Let's see where we are. P and a lot of this, you know, we always want to review the things we've done before. PWD, where are we? We're in the the Pi folder, in the home folder, in the root folder. Okay. If I have LS, we have nothing there except desktop and Python games, which are the folders that sort of come with the operating system. The things that we did in the earlier lessons I've gone ahead and got rid of so we can kind of start with a clean uh, with a clean uh, uh, file system. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make another folder. So I'm going to say make dir. I could, if I wanted in this folder, which I do, I could just give it a name. I could give it the name uh, my files. Okay. But I want to practice doing it relative to the root. So I'm going to say start at the root, go to home, go to pi, and then make the directory which is going to be called my files and so the slash takes you back to the root then you go into home then you go into pi and in pi you create a directory called my files okay now if i ls <coughs> boom there's my files okay i got several complaints about my other earlier lessons apparently people are not interested in the life history of my dogs so I've been asked to not type so much about my dogs and to get on with the lesson. Okay, let's see if there's a quicker way to create files. Let's just say touch, and I'm going to put it in my files relative to where we are now. And I'm going to say dog1.txt. Okay, now let's ls my files. Okay, and if we look at that touch command, it creates an empty uh, text file. You could go back and you could edit it in nano now and put some stuff in it, but we're just trying to create some files. And so let's go just hit the uh, up key and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to make this dogs2 and then I'm going to do make another one dogs3 and then I'm going to make another one dogs4. And then if you wonder how I'm getting that, you just hit the up key and it'll, it'll show you like your old commands. You see I'm hitting the up key or the down key. You can scroll through your old commands. If you didn't know that, you learned something new today, okay? So I'm going to come back and call it dogs5, okay? Now, what we've known from before, say ls my files. Okay, look at that. There are all my files. Okay, I'm going to create another directory. Make directory, and I'm going to create this one to be, uh, uh, let's see, I'll call it uh, folder, I'll, I'll call it uh, my, uh, I'll just call it text, or I'll call it, I know what I'll call it, I'll call it command output, like that. I do an ls and there is command output. Okay, so let's say if I do an ls of the folder my files, look at that, I got all those. What if I wanted to kind of keep track of that? What if I wanted to hang on to that for later? Well, what I could do is I could say uh, ls and I could say my files and then what I could do is I could send it to, you see the little greater than sign? I could send it to Let's go to the folder was called command output and then let's call it uh, directory.txt. So sort of the directory 
uh, that, 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 that I did there. All right. So now if I go boom, look at that. Now let's do a cat. Let's look at command output. And then uh, I need to do a cat command output. So let's look at that text file, dir.txt. This should do it, I think. And look at that. I have a file now called directory.txt that has the output of this command that I gave, ls my files. How did I do it? I said ls my files, but put, but put the data in the file command output slash directory.txt. So now I have that. What if I did it again? Or let's uh, <coughs> let's go in and uh, I'm sorry. Let's let's create another directory. So I'm going to go make uh, make directory uh, make directory, and I'm going to make the directory called my cars. Okay. Now if I ls, let something called my cars. And now I'm going to create files using the preferred, don't talk about my dogs and cars so much, uh, touch. I'm going to go into my cars, and then I'm going to create car1.txt. Okay, now let's look ls my cars. Look at that, there it is. So now I'll just get that command, and I'll just go back and do a 2. Okay, I'll go back and do a three. Okay, I'll go back and do a do a four. Let's do one more. Go back and do a five. Okay, so now let's ls my cars. Let's see which files I have. <coughs> I have the files car one, car two, car three, car four, car five, and they're all in the folder called my cars. Let's do an ls of what was the other one? My files. Okay, if I do an ls of my files, I've got dog1, dog2, dog3, dog4, dog5. Okay, let's go back and look at that file we created. Uh, let's do a cat, and we're going to cat. It was, uh, what was it called? Command output, and then dir.txt. So let's look at that. That was the output of that earlier uh, ls command. Well, let's do it again. Let's say ls. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ls uh, my cars. And then I'm going to send the output to uh, command output slash r.txt. So we're going to look inside and list the folder my cars. We're going to send the output to the folder command output slash directory.txt and let's see what happens. Okay, now let's cat directory.txt and look what we have here. Okay, look what we have here. We have the cars, but what did it do? It overwrote the dogs. Okay, it overwrote the dogs. And so we had the dogs in there and then when we did the command again, it overwrote it. Okay, so now let's look. In that, I've got the cars. All right, what if I wanted to append to the end but not overwrite? Well, I could do this. Okay, let me just write it out. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to ls. This time we are going to go to, uh, let's see, uh, let me just do an ls to just see where I am. Okay, we're going <coughs> to ls my files, okay, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to send it with two, send it, send it. This means put it on the end, okay, and then we're going to go to command output slash dir dot txt. All right, so let's think about this. We're going to list the contents of my files, and we're going to send it with two pointers to command output dot dir.txt. What that should do is that should add it to the end of the cars and not overwrite it. Okay, so now let's cat command output 
slash dir.txt. Okay, look at that. We got cars and we've got dogs. Let's do it instead. Uh, let's do it again. This time we're going to use one. What's going to happen? I'm going to end up with just what? Oops. I'm going to end up with just dogs because the cars and dogs were overwritten with just the dogs. So what you learn is <clears throat> you can take the output of these different commands that you can give to Linux and rather than sending it to the terminal window you can send it to a file and you can use that later. This is also very useful because you might want to read this in and automate something. When we get into scripting you might want to automate things where you would go in and do something to each one of these so you could sort of step through the files by looking at the names in the uh, in the file list and so there's some things that this will really help you with. So just understand what we've learned today is, is that we can take the output from our Linux terminal commands and we can send it to a file. If we use one arrow, uh, uh, one sort of like the greater sign, that would overwrite the file. It would create it and overwrite it. If we do two, it will append it to the end. And so we've got some flexibility there about whether we want to overwrite a file or whether we want to just append it. All of our normal path rules still apply. If we start with a slash, it references things all the way back to the root directory. If we don't put a leading slash, it starts reference relative to the folder that we are presently in. And if we do a dot dot, that takes us up one. So those are the kind of rules that I keep trying to emphasize and hope you will continue to learn. Okay, Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. This finishes up lesson number eight. Tune in shortly for lesson number nine. If you guys like it, give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Maybe share this video. Talk to you guys later.